Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're going to be looking at myth busting a couple of myths we have four to look at in particular. The first one being Autovolt FPS, the FPS counter itself, metabolism in raid versus the stash and the org with and without a foregrip. If you have any more common myths then please do leave them down in the comments as I might do another video like this again in the future. But first and foremost let's have a look at the Autovolt FPS. So this video was posted up by Niba 1998 about two days ago and this says setting vaulting mode to hotkey instead of auto auto boost your FPS by a significant amount, repost for easier to see the FPS counter. What this is referring to in particular is the new vaulting functionality that came with patch 0.14 and you can indeed choose between two different functions here. The first one is choosing hotkey which I think most people have at this point because they want a bit more control over it and basically you can set the hotkey that you use for vault so that it doesn't just happen on its own. However, a smaller minority of players do prefer it to just do it by itself, especially for small little steps or low fences and things like that, and so you can put the vaulting mode onto auto instead, which means that you don't have to press any button and that leaves your space key basically unencumbered. However, unfortunately, as per the original post here on Reddit, you can see that their FPS changes by about 20, so from 46 to approximately 65 by changing this on and off. So this was a perfect one to go and test in raid myself. I loaded into an offline streets raid with bots to make sure that the FPS was going to take some kind of hit and waited for the FPS to settle down. I then opened up into the menu because as some people say, there is a garbage collection process when you load into the menu. This normally only happens if you have RAM cleaner on, but I wasn't going to take any chances. After doing that, we then swap from hotkey over to auto and we can see that the FPS drops by quite a considerable margin. Again, it is about 20, 15, 20 FPS, something like that, especially once the FPS is stable and this is on streets in particular. It also doesn't seem like it's a one-off thing. If you swap back, it goes back up. If you swap back down, then it goes back down and it literally just depends on which one you have selected. I went back to check the thread and there were some people saying that they did some tests and it doesn't matter if it's auto or hotkey and it only matters with changing the setting. So I went in with auto selected instead and then changed it to hotkey but I personally had exactly the same results making sure that it was stable and making sure that I'm controlling for the menu slash RAM cleaner thing so if I do that first and then I swap over from auto to hotkey the FPS goes up and then back down when I swap over to auto so I don't think that this is correct. So yes, vaulting mode to hotkey instead of auto does indeed boost your FPS by a significant amount, especially on streets where people are normally crying out for frames. So if you have it on auto, try it on hotkey and streets might run a little bit better for you. Okay, so the next myth that I've heard a lot is about the FPS counter. I think this might even have been said by Nikita himself over at BSG at one point, which is that the FPS counter removes some FPS so you can't 100% rely on it. Uh, just to mention the console command FPS1 and this little thingy in the right corner will draw your like performance a bit so better not use the fps counter it will uh, it will <laughs> lower your fps <laughs> Naturally, the best way to go and test this one is to use uh, another third-party FPS counter. I'm using MSI Afterburner in this particular case, and then we just turn the FPS counter on or not. And after doing so, I can't see any difference in FPS at all. This is definitely true for offline mode, at least. I waited until it was stable. I put, turned the FPS counter on and off, and I did it in multiple places, and it doesn't seem to make any difference at all having the FPS counter on. So maybe this was true at one point, but it doesn't seem true anymore. Now, number three is metabolism in raid versus in the stash. There are people that swear that you can't increase your metabolism outside of a raid. Some people that say you can, some people say you can, but it's less. So I had a quick look at this to figure out exactly what was going on. So firstly, as you might expect, you don't get any metabolism points at all if your energy or hydration is full and you use some more. That doesn't happen in raid and it doesn't happen in the hideout either. As you can see here, if you eat a load of sugar, your metabolism points stay exactly as they were beforehand. This means that we have to use something that's going to decrease either our food or our water first and then use something to replenish it again if we're going to get any points. So in this particular case I used 50 sugar and then 50 water afterwards and as we can see our metabolism XP went from 68 to 74.1. Okay so that's just as it is without doing anything else. What you can then do is you can reset your progression and all of that stuff with the game server by doing a few things. You can either restart the game entirely, you can play a completely new raid or you can load into a raid and press back before it manages to load in. If you do this you get the little spinning wheel down in the bottom right hand corner which means that it's resynchronizing with you know the various inventory and quest servers and that kind of thing and this is also a handy tip if you get a level without being in raid but you don't have a quest that's appearing so you can just try and queue into a factory offline raid and then press back before you go in. Offline raids work too so the quickest way is to queue up for an offline raid and then just press back before it manages to load in fully. 
After doing this with the metabolism thing, we can see we went from 68 to 74.1. And then after we come back into our inventory, this is back down to 72. So yeah, we are getting some points here. It's just not the full amount of points that it looked like at the beginning. I tested this again with mayo this time, 94.9 points to begin with. We ate 50 mayo and then 40 water afterwards. And that took us to 99.7 metabolism XP. And then I went and raid cancelled and that took us down to 96.3. So most of the points are being reverted and rolled back. This is why you sometimes see yourself going up a level in metabolism but then when you actually go into a raid you then go up that level of metabolism again because you didn't actually get it it just looks like it on your client but you're not synchronized with the server properly but i did want to see if you could take this further and get a lot of xp without going into raids so this time i bought a ton of mayo and we ate 350s worth of mayonnaise and refilled with water in between each one and this did actually give us a level of metabolism and rolled us over to 5.5 xp now, what was really weird about this is that I went into raid and cancelled it again and I actually even completely closed the game and reopened it just in case that this was wrong. And when I came back, I actually had 6 XP, which is slightly more than I did before. Obviously, if you refilled this much in raid without diminishing returns, then it would be a lot more than this. So yeah, you don't get as much XP by anywhere near in stash as you would in raid. It's probably about a quarter to a fifth, something like that. But you do still get a little bit of experience and it doesn't really seem to diminish as far as I can tell anyway. So what's the verdict on this one? Yes, you can indeed get metabolism in the stash. It's just much more efficient to do it in the raid. All right, so the final one that we're looking at today is on the org. I started hearing this weird rumor, people coming into my chat and a lot of people talking about it. So I'm not really sure where this originated from, but people were telling me that if you use the org with a foregrip, you have more recoil than if you use it without. This is especially surprising because the org doesn't actually have any vertical recoil component to it at all. It's only five ergonomics, so it really shouldn't matter and it shouldn't make any difference to the spray pattern of the gun when you fire it. I went to go and test this a few different times and came to an interesting conclusion that's actually nothing really to do with the org at all. The very first test that I did came out with less recoil on the one with the foregrip rather than the one without, but some of the subsequent tests that I did were either the same or maybe the no foregrip one was slightly more. It all was a little bit variable and this led me to a new conclusion which is basically that no matter what I tested with the org it seems that sometimes the no foregrip one is better and sometimes the foregrip one is better and innately they're basically the same and it averages out to the same performance between the two. But the ramification is that based on the new recoil system, depending on exactly where that final shot lands, because there's a variability in how that vertical spray pattern works in the first place, that seems to be the new center for the full auto spray. If you got lucky two times in a row, you could quite easily come to the conclusion that the org without a foregrip has less recoil than the one with the foregrip, just because of the way the spray pattern looks on the wall without testing it, you know, five times or something. Now the recoil on the org without a foregrip being better than that with a foregrip, is debunked. This is a myth and is not true. But as I said, if you have any other commonly held myths around the Tarkov community, feel free to put them in the comment below and I might make another video like this sometime in the future. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons and as always, have fun in your raids.